video lecture series on computer architecture that is a course on uh, computer architecture my name is uh, dr prashant bachana working as assistant professor in the department of uh, electronics and communication uh, institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad so these are the uh, today's uh, presentation outline that is a course overview uh, evaluation of computing devices uh, basic computer organization so before we start our discussion on this course we'll see what are the content of this course so the course uh, so the course is on the computer architecture that is this course introduces the principles of uh, computer organization and the basic architecture of uh, architecture concepts that is in this uh, computer architecture course we will be studying the basic principles of uh, the how the computer is organized and the different architectures used so uh, after learning this course the students uh, it will help the students to know about the hardware and uh, hardware and the software uh, implementation that is the alu and logical unit uh, to solve addition uh, subtraction multiplication and uh, division problems so this will also this course will also uh, defines the constitu uh, constituent parts of the system that is how they are interconnected and how uh, they how they uh, interoperate in order to implement the architectural specification so that the student will also be able to learn the hardware components from the basic uh, gates uh, to the memory uh, and the io devices and the instruction set architecture in the design to improve the uh, improve the performance of the computer so uh, so the student uh, uh, the, the course uh, computer architecture the students uh, the, uh, these are the course objectives of this course that is the students will try to learn in this that is the organization and the architectural architecture of the computer and uh, electronic components then uh, the assembly language program execution so there are basically two types of uh, 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 language that is high level languages and the low level languages so uh, the computer just the assembly language uh, program uh, uh, assembly language so so will be le learning the students will be able to learn the assembly language program that is execution then the instruction format and instruction cycle then how uh, how to design a simple computer using hardware and the microprogram control methods then the students will also uh, learn the basic components of the computer systems beside the computer and the input output organization memory organization management and the and the pipe so these are the uh, different uh, components of the uh, computer that is input output memory and management in the pipeline so the course is divided into the five modules uh, it's module 1 2 3 4 5 so in the module 1 uh, we shall be learning uh, 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 introduction to the computer organization that is the, how uh, the basic computer organization that is how the computer uh, di different components of the computers are organized so after that we'll be studying the individual parts of the computers in detail that is cpu organization how the cpu is organized uh, is different parts of the cpu uh, then it's working uh, then the memory subsystem that is how the uh, the memory is uh, different types of uh, memory subsystem that is organization of the memory then uh, the interfacing of these memories into the output output devices uh, into the output or, uh, input output devices then we'll uh, learn the input output uh, subsystem in the module 1 then the interfacing then the simple computer level uh, programming languages uh, is the different uh, programming languages used uh, in the computer organization then the assembly language instructions that is how like what are the different types of uh, assembly language instructions uh, uh, present in the uh, assembly language then the simple instruction architecture so basically in the module 1 we will be studying uh, the introduction to the computer organization that is different uh, parts are uh, like different components of the computer uh, computer uh, will be studying in detail and uh, the programming languages so the computer understands only the machine language so basically there are two types of languages higher level languages and the lower level languages so the the, the computer under, understands the machine uh, machine level language that is the assembly language so we will be studying what are these assembly languages uh, present and their how the instructions are defined and their architecture so in the second module we shall be learning about the organization of the computer that is the register transfer that is the register transfer language then the register transfer bus memory transfers then the arithmetic micro operations logical micro operations shift micro operations and the control uh, memory so in the module 2 we will be learning about the organization of a computer that is uh, 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 the task given to any computer is taken as an instruction so 
So all the instructions will be stored in the register. So we'll be learning uh, the, the, the different types of registers present in the uh, the computer. That is uh, the general purpose registers and special purpose registers, and how uh, these registers are used for different operations. That is micro operations and the di different types of operations like logical operations, arithmetic operations. All these things we'll be learning in the module two, and we'll also be learning the control memory. The module 2. So in the module uh, 3 we, are, we shall be learning the CPU and the computer arithmetic that is how the CPU is designed uh, the CPU design, how to design the CPU, how to improve the performance of the CPU then inside that the instruction cycle so any uh, uh, any task given to the computer is taken as an instruction so what are the different like what is the instruction cycle that is present so how the computer executes uh, an instruction so what are the different steps involved in that so that will be learning then the data representation how the data are represented represented then the memory reference instructions are uh, present so without memory no operations will be performed in a computer so, uh, so we'll be seeing the memory reference instructions in the model three. Then we'll also see the input, output, and the interrupt uh, uh, instructions. Then we'll be studying the addressing modes. So, addressing modes are the different ways in which uh, the data can be defined in a uh, in a program. So, that is in the computer architecture, we'll be using the um, uh, uh, assembly language. So in the assembly language, addressing modes are the different ways in which uh, the data are represented. So we'll be uh, seeing the different types of addressing modes. That is, register addressing mode, immediate addressing modes. So in uh, in all these, we'll be studying how a data can be represented in a assembly language program. Then after that, we'll be studying the data transfer and the manipulation. Then the program controls. And so how the program is executed and its different control uh, operations. Then uh, after that, we'll be studying in the model three the computer arithmetic. That is the different types of addition, subtraction, floating point operations. All these. Uh, so we'll be see, seeing the instructions used for uh, a computer arithmetic uh, for all these uh, for all these operations. So that is about the model three. That is CPU and computer architecture. So in the model four, we shall be learning the input output organization. So the, like the so how the input output uh, components are. Uh, are organized and how they are uh, interfaced with each other that is input output organization then their interface then how the data is transferred in how the data is transferred uh, in uh, how the data is transferred between the input and output that is the data transfer uh, there are two types of uh, data transfer that is synchronous and asynchronous data transfer so we shall be learning about the asynchronous data transfer in that uh, the modes of operation that is the, the, the different types of uh, 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 data transfer techniques in the uh, in the asynchronous and synchronous uh, uh, modes. Then we will be studying about the priority interrupt, then the direct memory access. So in the final uh, model, uh, that is a memory organization. So in this, we will be learning about the memory organization. So we, like what is the memory hierarchy, the different types of memory, that is RAM and ROM present, that is the internal memory and the external memory. So the memory is divided into the two types, that is internal memory and the so how like what is the hierarchy of this memory in the computer uh, organization then we'll uh, we'll study these memories uh, in detail that is main memory then the auxiliary memory associative memory catch memory virtual memory then uh, uh, parallel processing and interrupt so uh, like basically so also we'll be studying all the the different types of uh, uh, memories present so here let us an example the cache memory is a memory which is placed in between the cpu and the and the main memory to increase the speed of operation so each memory has its uh, advantages so we'll be studying all these uh, different types of memories in the model uh, in the model 3 and we'll also be seeing how a parallel processing is done how a parallel processing is done by a cup computer and the instructions in the pipeline so the computer uh, so in the instruction uh, pipeline the computer receives uh, more than uh, one uh, instruction to execute so so like after executing each instruction the next instruction will be in the pipeline so we will also see that like what is the instruction pipelining and other things so these are the so these are the contents of uh, the course that is the course is divided into five models so at the end of the course, we should, we should be able to know the all the components of the computer, memories, input output devices, and other things. So now let us start your discussion. The, <coughs> the first topic uh, of this course that is introduction to the computer organization. So like in order to complete, like uh, understand the uh, understanding, uh, uh, understand the computer system. So it is always important to consider the both the components of the computer. That is hardware and uh, hardware and the software. Uh, parameters of the 
of, of the computer. So that is in other way, like every functionality of the computer has to be studied to increase the performance of the computer. So, uh, uh, so here the two important terms will come here. That is the computer organization and the computer architecture. So like we will be learning for it, we will see like what is computer organization and the computer architecture. So these two uh, 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 param, uh, things we will be learning that is uh, uh, focuses on the various parts of the computer in order to reduce the execution time of the program and improve the performance of the uh, computer. So uh, uh, like we will see what is computer organization and the computer architecture. So, the computer organization is uh, it's basically deals uh, we, we, is the study of the system uh, from the software point of view. Software point of view that uh, that use the overall description of the system and working principles without going in detail. Uh, uh, in detail, that is in other words, you can say it is like mainly about the programmer's point of view. So, in the computer organization, in the computer organization, we will be studying, uh, we will be seeing the computer in the software point of view. That is like the its internal uh, software is used and how uh, the uh, how a computer works. So that is the study of the computer organization. Whereas in case of computer architecture, uh, so it is a study of the system from the hardware point of view. That emphasizes on the system, like how the system is implemented physically. So so uh, this is a difference between the computer organization and the uh, architecture that is in the computer organization we will be seeing the computer we will be studying the computer on the software point of view and in the architecture we will be seeing the computer in the hardware point of view so let us see some of the uh, the difference between uh, the computer architecture and the computer organization so these are some of the differences so in the computer architecture the it like as i mentioned earlier that is it, it, it is concerned with the way uh, the hardware uh, components are connected together from uh, like uh, from a computer system that is the computer architecture deals with the hardware point of view whereas in case of computer organization it is a study about the software components of the of, of, of the computer then uh, the, the the difference between the computer architecture it acts as interface between the hardware and software the computer architecture whereas it deals with the components of the uh, connection of the system that is in a physical point of view how the comp uh, how the components are connected then the next difference uh, the next difference is the computer architecture helps to understand the functionality of the system whereas uh, the computer organization uh, tells about how exactly all the units in the systems are arranged and uh, interconnected so so basically in the computer architecture we will be seeing we will be seeing the computer uh, uh, like how the hardware, the different components like input output devices, CPU and other things are connected physically. So, very in, in case of or, uh, organization, it tells like how the units are arranged and uh, interconnected. So then the uh, like uh, the computer architecture uh, is like we'll see on the programmer can view the architecture in terms of the instruction addressing modes in the register. That is in uh, the in the like uh, from the computer architecture point of view, we'll be seeing the computer in terms of these instructions, how the computers are uh, executing the instructions, how addressing modes are defined in the register. Whereas in case of organization, uh, expresses the realization of the uh, architecture. So these are. Uh, these are few more uh, like differences. So while designing a computer uh, system, uh, that is architecture, is considered first, uh, and after that, uh, like the organization, uh, uh, an organization is done in the on the basis of the architecture. So there are two steps in designing a computer. That is, first you will design the architecture, then the next step is the uh, uh, organization. Uh, first is the uh, computer system architecture is designed, then the organization of the computer is done. So these are the steps uh, involved in the uh, computer, uh, uh, computer like design of a computer. So the computer architecture deals with the high level design issues, whereas the computer organization deals with the low level design issues here. Then the last difference between uh, the uh, the computer architecture and the organization is the architecture involves the logical instruction set, addressing modes, data types, and cache memories. That is, we'll be seeing the computer like inside uh, from a programmer's point of view is the computer architecture whereas in the organization it, it, it just involves the physical components how the physical components are connected together then the adder then the signals peripherals like input output peripherals all these things how these things are connected so like as an overview we can see that uh, the main uh, the difference the main difference between the computer architecture and the uh, uh, um, 
uh, organization is so we'll be seeing how uh, uh, these are the uh, two different types in which uh, the uh, the system can be viewed in a software point of view that is computer architecture and then the computer organization will be seeing the computer in the hardware point of view so these are the like a few differences between computer architecture and computer organization <coughs> then the next topic of our discussion is evolution of computing devices so uh, uh, since 1940 the size uh, the evolution of the computer uh, uh, computing devices has started so, so from then uh, with the advancement of the integration technology so the sizes of the devices have reduced so uh, the first computing device uh, device which was uh, uh, invented uh, was eniac that is electronic numerical integrated computer which was invented in the year of 1940 so this computing device cons uh, was consisting of 18000 buzzing electronic switches called as vacuum tubes so the first computer to design which was made of a vacuum tubes that is uh, 18 18000 vacuum tubes and 42 panels uh, which are, are of size of 9 into 2 into 1 inch so uh, which were organized in the u shape so it was like the size of this computer was uh, equal to the size of the uh, size of the room uh, and uh, it was uh, it was uh, perimeter with the forcing air cooling so the air cooling is uh, is meant is put to to keep the uh, to keep the engine uh, to keep the engine cool so that the computer use a maximum performance so as you can see the the first computer the size of the computer was very uh, like equal to the size of the room then the next computer uh, which was invented was the abc that is uh, as known as the first digital electronic computer then uh, so it was designed by uh, the scientist that is uh, john vincent and his assistant uh, in 1937 then the next computer which was uh, uh, invented in, in, invented by the german inventor uh, 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 cornar jus so it was the first working programmable fully automatic uh, computing uh, computing machine so then uh, in the 1947 that the next version has come that is by the german uh, it was the first programmable and fully automatic machine. then the transistor invented in the 1947 that is by the uh, like then the evolution has started uh, by the integration of uh, ics that is integration of uh, uh, in, 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 integration of the ics so uh, so uh, so the advancement of the mohr's law so the scientist called as mohr so in the 1947 he proposed that the number of transistors uh, implemented on an ic can be doubled every year so with uh, with this law so there was a huge uh, improvement on uh, reducing the size of the computer so the first computer which was implemented was uh, equal to the size of the room so after that the integration of uh, government of the integration technology uh, so the the number of devices which were implemented on the ics were reduced uh, uh, reduced that is the more number of ics were in implemented uh, in a less area that is in the 1968 the robert noinsi the co-founder of electronics company so he has like uh, developed these ics wherein uh, to reduce the size of the computer then in the 1983 uh, like uh, uh, lisa was launched as the first personal computing with the graphical gui so this was the first computer with the gui that is graphical user interface it was like uh, was sold commercially uh, that uh, by the company motorola that is the version of 68000 like uh, dual floppy disk drives and 5 mb memory and 1 mb of ram so this was the first uh, uh, computing uh, 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 the computer with gui then in the 1990 the apple released the magisto pro like portable uh, computer that is with the like 7.3 kg weight uh, so this was the next computer which was uh, invented and then next evaluation was done with the help uh, evaluation of the computer started with the uh, the other companies with, with the help of the microprocessors so this is the evolution of the computer devices since 1940 so the size of the computer has started reducing now as you can see from the size of the room to the uh, the size of like palm tops laptops with very uh, like the 
uh, small sizes so, so the sizes of the devices has, has been reduced so the, this was the evaluation of the computing uh, devices so this evaluation was possible because of the integration technology so in the integration technology that is vls a very large scale integration so in this technology the more number of transistors were implemented in a small area so because of that uh, the sizes of the devices have been reduced uh, uh, to a very small size then our next uh, uh, point of uh, our uh, uh, topic is a basic computer organization that is how the computer is organized what are the different types of uh, uh, computers which are uh, uh, components of the present uh, uh, present in a computer so the computer organization describes the functions and the designs of various uh, digital system that is the general purpose system known as a digital system so like <coughs> Includes the telephone switching exchangers, the digital voltmeters, digital counters, uh, electronic uh, calculator, and all these things are the examples of uh, 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 co uh, computer organization. So the main component of the computers are like there are three main components of a computer that is CPU, that is central processing unit, then uh, the input output devices, and uh, the memory. So the functional units of a computer system are the parts of the CPU. So the, the CPU is the heart of the system and uh, it is responsible for performing all the operations by uh, which is controlled by a, a computer program. So this diagram uh, shows uh, the basic computer organization. As you can see, uh, there are five main components uh, uh, of a computer that is the input unit, like this is the input unit. And these are the like output units. Okay, then there is a CPU here, central processing unit. Then the memory present. So without the memory, no operations will be performed in any computer. So inside the CPU, there will be ALU and so on. Then the control unit and the output. So these are the five components of a computer. So we'll discuss it one by one. Okay, so the, uh, the basic function of a computer is what? So uh, with the help of the input devices, the input will be taken and the computer the cpu present inside the computer will execute the will, will execute the will, will process the uh, the input and it will produce the output so here in this figure you can see a digital camera connected to the computer so the input is given with the help of the input devices the the computer that is the cpu present inside the computer will process it and it will produce the output so this is the uh, this is a basic operation of a, a, a computer that it takes any input as an instruction and it will uh, process it and it will produce the output. So these are the five components of the computer that is input uh, uh, unit that is uh, uh, with the help of the input uh, uh, unit will take the inputs then there is a storage uh, uh, storage unit that is the memory. So there are different types of uh, memory as you can see that is RAM and ROM. So before we are like we are going to buy any new computer we will be seeing the RAM right. So if you have more RAM the speed of the operations will be more so without memory no operations will be performed in a, a computer so or so with the help of the resistors so whatever the user is requesting to the computer so that will be taken as an instruction and with the help of the memory uh, with the help of the memory so all the operations will be executed by the cpu so uh, there are two parts of the cpu that is control unit and the alu so the alu here is alu stands for arithmetic and logical units so this is the heart of the company that uh, Part of the computer that is a CPU. So inside this, there are two components: are that ALU and control unit. So the ALU is responsible for performing uh, uh, all the operating um, operations uh, uh, like addition, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division operations. That is arithmetic operations. Then the control unit is responsible for uh, performing uh, to control the uh, the complete operation of the computer. Then uh, here is a storage unit that is memory. Then the output unit will. Uh, output units uh, consist of the output devices uh, for the display so these are the five components of a computer so we'll st uh, see these components one by one so the first unit of a computer is input unit so as the name itself it is indicated uh, it's uh, very simple and straightforward so the input units are uh, uh, used by the computer is to read the data that is the, the, the most commonly used uh, input devices are like keyboard as you can see in the figure here keyboard uh, the keyboard, uh, 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 keyboard, microphone, and other uh, different types like joysticks, uh, track balls, microphones. So, like these are like n number of uh, input devices. So, uh, basically, these uh, input devices are used to read the 
data. So, however, most well known input device is a keyboard, as all of us know. The most important, uh, most well known input device is a is a uh, is a keyboard. So, well, whereas a key is pressed, well, the corresponding letter of the digits is automatically translated into the corresponding binary code and transmitted over the cable with either the memory or the processor. So, whenever we press any key on a keyboard, so uh, the, the computer will not understand the high level language that is A, B, C, D, all this it will not understand. So, when you press A on a computer, so the A will not be understood by the computer, the computer understands only the machine language. So, that A will be converted into the binary code that is ASCII code. So, that will only be identified by the, by the computer. Then the next important part of a computer that is central processing unit. So, this is the heart of the computer. So, this CPU is responsible for performing all the operations requested by the by the user. That is, it is commonly known as CPU and it can be referred as an electronic circuitry with the computer that carries out the instructions given by a computer program and perform the basic arithmetical logic and input output operations specified by the instructions. So, as you can say the computer whatever the user is requesting it to the computer that will be taken as an instruction. So, here we should use the word instruction. So, whatever user is requesting to the computer so it will, it will be called as an instruction and it will take as an instruction and it will be executed. So, the CPU is responsible uh, for executing all uh, the arithmetical, logical and the control and uh, input output operations specified by the user. Then the next important part that is the third part uh, of a computer is the memory. So, memory units. So, as I mentioned earlier, without memory, no operations will be uh, performed. So, uh, which is uh, generally referred as the storage unit in a computer that is a kept uh, running and the contains data needed to be run by the program. So, whatever the user is requesting, so all the data will be stored in the uh, stored in the uh, stored in the memory. So, the memory unit can be categorized into uh, uh, two uh, main ways that is the primary memory and the secondary memory. So, the main memory is divided into the two. So, it, it enables uh, a processor to access a uh, running execution applications and services that are uh, temporarily stored in a specific memory location. So, whenever uh, to execute any operation uh, requested by the user, so the CPU takes the address which are stored in the primary and the secondary memories and it will execute the instructions and the results will be stored in the memory that is in, uh, in particular address in the registers. So, as we have said the two types of memory that is the primary storage is the fastest uh, memory that operates at uh, electronic speeds that is uh, primary memory contains a large number of semiconductor storage cells capable of storing a uh, one bit of information. So, here we should remember the computer stores the information in, in terms of the bits that is in terms of zeros and ones. So, all the information whatever we are seeing image, video, audio all the information will be stored in the bits only binary bits that is in terms of zeros and once. So, the word length of in the primary memory is between 16 to 64 bits, which is also known as the volatile memory, which means that when a computer is, uh, uh, which means when the computer is shut down, anything contained in the RAM is lost. Okay. So, this is a primary memory that uh, it is called as volatile because the power goes off. So, all the information present in this primary memory will be, uh, will, will be lost. So, this primary memory is basically is to increase the uh, the speed of the uh, uh, computer. So, in the secondary memory, uh, the operating systems and other uh, things will be stored. Then, uh, the one more type of uh, memory which is used in the computer is the cache memory. So, cache memory is also uh, as a kind of memory which is used to fetch the data uh, soon and they are uh, coupled with the process. So, between the memory and the, uh, uh, the memory and the ALU, uh, the uh, cache memory is used uh, is used to increase the speed of the operation uh, of the computer. So the most commonly used primary memories are RAM and ROM here, as you can see. So in the ROM, our operating system operating system is stored. So it, like it is called as read only memory. So it is called as read only memory. So only we can read the data which is present in the computer. So when we start our computer, so the ROM will come into the picture. That is uh, to uh, uh, to update uh, the OS will be stored in this uh, ROM. So once the computer starts, then the RAM is uh, the RAM will come into the picture to increase the speed of operation. That is random access memory. So here ROM is only we can read the data. Whereas in case of RAM, we can read as well as 
you can read and write. So both operations can be done uh, in the RAM. So that is the difference between the RAM, uh, RAM and ROM. So ROM means only you can read the data in the RAM. So that is why we always prefer the computers and the uh, mobile phones with the more RAM. So if you have more RAM, is the uh, speed of operations will be very high. So the most commonly uh, uh, common examples of the secondary memory are like magnetic. So the secondary memory. So as you have discussed earlier, there are two types of memories: primary and the secondary memory. So in the primary memory, we will be having RAM and the ROM. Uh, uh, so which are present inside the computers. The secondary memories are the memory which are, which are used uh, outside the computer that is magnetic disk, magnetic tapes, uh, optical disks, uh, so disk drives and so these are uh, all the uh, are called as a secondary memory. That is in the uh, the next part is the ALU that is arithmetic and logic unit which is uh, called as uh, the uh, ALU. So the so, uh, <coughs> So most of all the arithmetic and the logical operations of a computer are exceeding in the ALU. So ALU of the, uh, of the processor that it performs the arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and also the logical operations like AND or NOT operations. Okay, so that is the function of uh, the ALU. Uh, that is arithmetical and logical unit. So as you can see here, any operation requested uh, in the uh, computer. So yeah. There are basically three types of buses present here in the ALU that is control bus, data bus and address bus. Through the address bus, the address is, address, uh, address is transferred. That is, uh, in a particular address, the data will be present. So, the data bus transfers the, uh, the data and the control bus is used to control the whole operation. So, basically, in a, uh, so with the help of the ALU, so with the help of these three buses, Okay, so whenever a user is requesting any operation, so that will be stored in the memory in a particular address. So, so that address will be uh, transferred with the help of this address bus and the data will be uh, sent through the, uh, the help of the data bus and the control bus, it is used to give uh, the instruction to the uh, CPU and the ALU to execute the instruction uh, uh, where the data is present and where the address is located. So in a particular address, the data will be stored. So this the control unit. So the control bus or the control unit is responsible for performing to control the whole operations in a computer. See the control unit. As I have mentioned uh, earlier, the control unit is a component of a computer that is the central processing unit that coordinates the operation of the processor. So the complete operation, the initiation of the uh, the initiation of the uh, instruction execution is uh, totally controlled by a control units. This is also like uh, the important uh, uh, component of a computer. So it tells the computer memory, arithmetical logical unit, uh, input output devices, how to respond to a program instruction. That is the control unit is also known as the nerve center of a, of a computer. See whenever a user is requesting any, uh, uh, any operation, so that we are calling it as an instruction. So the control unit is responsible, it will tell the CPU that where where the data is present and in which address the data is present. So this uh, the control uh, unit is the nerve of the computer system. So it will, uh, it will coordinate. Uh, it will be in the coordination uh, uh, with the processor for performing all the operations uh, to initiate the execution uh, to terminate the execution. So all these uh, things will be uh, all these things will be uh, done uh, the help of the control unit. Right. Let us consider an example of addition of two uh, operands by the instruction given like add uh, LOCA R not. So what this instruction will do? So yeah, so this instruction will add the content of R not. So R not is a register here, and uh, so it will add the content of these two locations, and the results will be stored in uh, LOC. Yeah, this uh, register. So this instruction adds the memory location. That is here LOC is a memory location and it will add the content of this LOC A and R naught. So operand, uh, um, operand and places the sum in the uh, sum in this R naught here. So this instruction uh, internally performs uh, several steps are involved. So the initiation of this instruction is uh, is uh, uh, done uh, with the help of a of a control unit. So in, in the like, so this is an instruction. Uh, this is an assembly language instruction okay that is assembly language instruction formats will be like this so this add means what it is an uh, instruction which is used to add the two operands here 
that is LOC is the address in this address some data will be stored and in R0 is a register so in the computer whatever or like all the operations like the data will be present in the uh, registers so there are basically two types of uh, registers actually so one is the general purpose registers general purpose registers and another one is the special purpose registers okay so the general purpose registers are like r0 to r r7 like that so in the general purpose registers are used uh, general purpose registers are in the general purpose registers so only the data will be stored in the special purpose registers like the stack pointer stack pointer in the program counter let us say the program counter so the program counter register is a special uh, purpose register which holds the address of the next instruction to be executed so the computer will be receiving the n number of instructions right so the program counter is a special purpose registers uh, uh, register which is uh, which is um, which will uh, tells that like, which holds the address of the next instruction to be registered so you should uh, uh, remember one point here so all the, uh, the all the information in the comp uh, in the computer like uh, operation so the 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 data will be present in the uh, registers and registers and in speci uh, in some specific addresses so the operations will be performed by the alu and it will execute the instructions and the results will also be stored in the registers and uh, address locations so that we have to remember here then the final uh, uh, the uh, the final unit of uh, the computer uh, organization that is the uh, is the uh, uh, output unit so the the primary function of the output unit as the name is indicated to send the process results to the user so let us say the examples of uh, these output are like monitor then the printer then speakers headset projector uh, and these bottles okay so these are few examples of uh, the output units so in a computer the computer will process the input and it will give the output to the uh, uh, to the output unit uh, so that the user can see the output let us say like we have taken an example so, uh, example of the printer so we have given the printer with the help of the input unit so the computer will process it so with the, uh, so the so the output unit the printer will print the uh, the print the whatever the input uh, 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 the input processed output is there so these are the output uh, unit components which are used to send the process results to the user so that the user can see the output so the output devices display the information in a way that the user can understand the output devices are uh, like uh, uh, species of equipment that are used to uh, generate the information or any other responses processed by the uh, computer so these devices uh, display the information that has an held or generated within the computer so the most commonly used output devices are like shown here so these are the uh, these are the topics we have today so in the today's in the first lecture of uh, uh, the course on computer architecture so we have seen uh, the the course contents so the course was divided into the uh, the course is divided into five modules and we have seen uh, the introduction uh, the course uh, the, the the course overview and uh, uh, we have seen in the today's class we have uh, learned so we have seen at uh, the course overview the course overview, then the evaluation of the computing devices, that is the different uh, types of uh, uh, like how the evaluation of the computing devices has started since 1940. Uh, and we have, we have seen the basic computer organization, wherein we have uh, seen the five basic components of a, uh, of a computer organization. So, in the like, this is about the first video lecture on uh, the computer architecture, and we'll continue the our course on this computer uh, organized uh, architecture in the next video thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates